<laughs> Nailed it. You know, sometimes I question myself. Sometimes I question my true genius. And then I write things like Kentucky Fried Dickin. And I'm so happy with myself that I just... I, just, I you know? <laughs> I just never doubt myself over again after something like that. Couldn't possibly. Right. <laughs> let's... <laughs> you know? Let's play it. Let's do it. Okay. Um, this is... Somehow real. Oh, wow, it's very loud. It's got very interesting music. That's a lot of woodwind instruments going on there. What's up with that? All right. Let's... Okay. <laughs> so, I don't need to explain this. Just accept what's happening. <laughs> accept his strong, well-flavored hands on your body. And just, you know, just let it happen, okay? Just... <laughs> You know, don't be a tease. Um, let's let's do it, right? We're playing it. Um, this is I love you, Colonel Sanders. A finger licking good <laughs> dating <sir. laughs> I've been anticipating this for some time. Yep, yep. It's been my dream to play it for like a day. Um, this is gonna be spicy. Yes, yes. Nailed it. Before we get started, tell us your name. Welcome, Chef. Huh. Um. Uh, uh, hmm. What's my name? Say my name. Say my name, Colonel. Call me. <laughs> um, uh, hmm. God, it's hard. Uh, packed. Nicely. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, let's... Oh. <laughs> is that is that all chicken? Okay. Yeah. Oh, of course it is. Why would I doubt that? <clears throat> you sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. Wait, I gotta look at this thing. What's going on here? There's hearts on the window. There's there's rackets around jewelry. Um, BTS? 
is one of those Jankook. I <laughs> and that's a poster of a chicken. Yes, it is. I've made a mistake. <laughs> I can't do this. I can't do this for hours. Um, okay. The world is peaceful and serene. You can stay in the moment forever. Or you could wake up. Now, now, now. Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. Uh, throw the clock out the window and stay in bed forever. You slept through the school year and gave up on the once in a lifetime opportunity to meet Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Wonderful. Let's try and get every horrible ending we can. Uh, let's try that again. <laughs> Wait, does it take you all the way back to the start every time? Because then it's not worth it. Then <laughs> it's just not worth it. Just try and pick the right options, man. Oh, dear. <laughs> I just sleep softly as the morning sun gets a warm glow through the window of your master's gym department. The world's peaceful and serene. You can stay in the moment forever. Or you can wake up now and now you're first getting out of school and then sleep in. Smack that clock. Up and at him. Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. <laughs> University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. It would be difficult <laughs> to fit more words that mean the same thing in the one sentence. That is, that's not a sentence, it's, it's nothing. Okay, your mind begins to wander. Who will be there? What will you cook? Oh, I have a guess. <laughs> what should you wear? Time begins to fly by, and you find your imagination getting away from you. Uh, I can't daydream a bit. No, you'll need to take this seriously. Ah, <laughs> Ah, uh, I'd better make sure to arrive prepared for the first day. You bust through your morning checklist. Teeth equal brushed, hair equal combed, pits equal deodorized. Nothing can stop you now from <clears throat> from completing the secret 5, 6, 80 herbs and spices recipe. You confidently grab a biscuit, strut out the door, and head off to class. There is someone in the world. <laughs> someone exists in the world. Likely that they're already dead, you know? <laughs> this has been out for a couple of years. It's likely they killed themselves. But there is someone that at some time existed in the world who got the call and ran into someone they loved and told them, I did it. I got the job. I get to make the hum 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 noises in the KFC dating simulator game. <laughs> Just what you needed to get your blood flowing. <laughs> Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. No, that wasn't like a one-time typo translation thing or anything. That That's real. That's the name. That's what we're calling this. I need to turn this down. It's too much. <laughs> it's just too much at once. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. Oh, my gosh. Hello. <laughs> She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely love her for it. Good morning, packed nicely. Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Sorry, I know. That's not she doesn't look like she speaks like that, but the the name Miriam sounds like she does. <laughs> actually, uh, actually I'm because I sure am excited. A little nervous. Okay, okay, a lot nervous. What's the... It's just that this morning I made breakfast for myself, but, well, when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? There's not enough spunk in my eggs. Ooh, Miriam. Classic Miriam, raised by Master Chef parents. She's always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were little babies playing together, you and, and you rescued me from that quick sad box. What? <laughs> it's been clear to me that you're the most loving, uh, caring person I know. You're gonna do great. Crying noises, that's fun. 
met with University of Cooking School Academy for Learning's famous three-day-only semesters. <laughs> I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. Three-day-only semesters, of course. A sweet girl, but <laughs> Miriam has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. Miriam seems like a much more interesting leading character for us to follow. I would prefer to do that. Should you pep talk her or change the subject to give her some relief? Are all of these, like, do all of these contain a bad ending? Hmm. Uh, pep talker. Oh, I remember last month when we saw that fortune teller and had our tar tarot cards read? The lady with the mask who gave me nightmares, I've been trying to forget. I know she looked spooky, but she was so sweet. And she told you that you were destined for great things. Remember that card with the fancy looking tower? And that other card featuring the handsome fellow with the red suit? Now, you've been waiting for so long to meet a handsome fellow I could call my own. <laughs> yes. And I'm sure you will soon. In no time, we'll be graduating. And you'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt cooking in no time at all. I'm sorry, like, so, <laughs> in this world, is there like, is it, is, is there like, three days of school, a semester, and then, and then nothing? You just sit at home for months? It's fine, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. <laughs> As you talk Miriam up, you can feel her nerves begin to ease. You know what? Maybe everything will be okay after all. And if not, at least I have these killer bags. <laughs> could you believe I cut them myself? You could definitely believe it. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, uh, I cannot believe it. Before you get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands and onto the ground. Uh, uh, hey. <gasps> it's Ashkla. <laughs> what the fuck? Is that meant to be Ashley? It's not. <laughs> Nobody spells Ashley like that, right? I'm calling her Ashley. It's Ashley, your arch rival. She's totally evil, but you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants, and she knows it. That shouldn't. You shouldn't have a. Okay. <laughs> fight, fight, fight. Let's hope. <laughs> Uh, hello, Ashley. <laughs> uh, God, there's gonna be too many voices in this thing. <laughs> She's got chicken on her tights. She's got fried chicken holes cut out of her tights. Also, like, coat, right? Like, chef coat. This is a chef coat, too. Why is there skirts? Why, why tiny skirt? Doesn't matter. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. <laughs> you leave packed nicely shins alone. They are perfectly normal shins. Ugh, oh, you can't stand Ashkali. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley, but she had to get, add extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone. Right. Well, I mean, like, the, the lay at the end, that's a, that's a normal way to spell it around here, at least. But the E as well, that's a little bit much, Ashkali. If it... <laughs> If anyone knows what perfect shins look like, it's us. Oh, we're not gonna let you or your really weird insults get to us. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van the Man Man, has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight, you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie. The rockin' glutes. I feel violated having to read this. At some point, I might just need to leave it up for a minute so you guys can read it yourself. This is getting bad. Ahem! Van Van! You've never been sure what their arrangement is, but as long as you've known them, Ashkly and Van Van have just been as close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. 
I uh, can't believe that University of Cooking School Academy for Learning would ever allow people like you to attend as students. <laughs> oh, no, right. You think they'd just hand us our diplomas now? Uh, 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 nah. Or um, maybe hire us on as professors. You know, amateurs could learn a lot from us. Perfect. I think I nailed it. <laughs> With the first day of school about to start, there's just no time to properly tell these two off, so you resist the urge. Oh, let's go, Miriam. Psh, see you later, losers. <laughs> oh, gods! <laughs> what the fuck is that thing? As you approach the door... Stop, stop. Don't boing anymore, please. As you approach the door, you see a goofy-looking kid push it, pushing hard against the window directly next to it. Oh my god. <laughs> Oops. I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Oh, that should do the trick. I love you. <laughs> uh, I uh, think you mean thank you. My name is Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. Could someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. Also, his name tag clearly says Bob, but I guess he's reading it upside down. Oh dear. I feel like that's not okay. <laughs> uh, hi, Pop. I'm back nicely. So, are you gonna make me hold this door all day? Nope. And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Is it just. Oh, uh, fuck, shit. I'm messing up all the voices. There's so many already. Is it just me, or is he kind of cute? Oh no. Uh, I uh, think it's just you. You both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. You stand at the edge of the room, on What the? <laughs> what? Okay. We're only learning about cooking, but there's a, there's a right angle triangle on the board. Map of the world. Okay. So is it is it a school or is it like a... I don't... Okay. You stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit-chatting. A scruffy-looking pooch takes his place at the podium at the front of class. Adorable. And his name is Sprinkles. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And, uh... uh no, I, I, I have no more registers for this. <laughs> now, now, quiet down, everyone. <laughs> Okay, that voice it will do. <laughs> uh, who is this unreasonably cute pup, and why is he in our culinary class? You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of UCSLAL. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> please, please, uh, pl please. P please call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and light and fluffy, but I still demand respect. Woof. What? A cute dog is our professor. This is the best school ever. Uh, I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining. Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. Ain't silly. Someone close the window. And then... He walks in. <laughs> you're immediately swept up. <laughs> Ignore that. And, but you're immediately swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. It's him. It's. <laughs> yeah, but that's my favorite student. Harlan. Harlan? Is his name Harlan? Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles, sorry, Professor Dog, before he can finish his sentence. Please call me Colonel. Oh my, Colonel Sanders. 
A hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of desks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. Sweat begins to bead across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you, and you're not entirely wrong. Ah, uh, fuck, what was her voice? <laughs> oh, this over here must be sweaty sweats a lot. This is some cringe, dude. <laughs> But it's, like, it's kind of perfect, right? Because if they made a dating simulator, KFC, because this is, a KFC made this, or licensed it or whatever, then it would have been, like, terrible, right? And everyone would have made fun of it. But if they purposefully, as I imagine they must, have made it this bad, this bad, then suddenly it's, it's, it's such a meme that it's, Good? No, it's still bad. I don't get it. <laughs> um, uh, oh, this over here must be sweaty sweats a lot. Uh, maybe we should open that window back up before a faucet pits melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. Uh, hold on just a second. Nobody talks to my friend like that. Oh, you two both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class. Um, well, what is with all your really weird insults? Oh, <laughs> who voted for this? Oh, Spaggot did. <laughs> I think you did too, Ross. <laughs> hey, Agamemnon, how's it going? <laughs> this is fun so far. Uh, Besides, when Peck nicely drops, sweats, it's not gross, it's beautiful. Look at that shiver. Oh, Jesus, Miriam, please stop. Uh, you take a moment to clean yourself up. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's a good thing you didn't forget about that deodorant this morning. This classroom is hot, hot, hot. Would you like this video to get likes or dislikes? It's a good question. <laughs> um, uh, Professor Dog steps in to settle the class down and set some ground rules. Uh, uh, welcome to University of Cooking School. Uh, the voices are gone. <laughs> I'm going to lose my voice by the end of this, doing this all at once. Um, uh, uh, what's like a, what's like a really like Northeastern American accent, like a harsh one, like. Welcome to the University of Cooking Skill Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. Date me and you have instant one. Oh, can you do Japanese? A Japanese accent? I don't think that would go down well. <laughs> uh, the birthplace of culinary legends, past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears. There will be blood. There might even be really adorable tidy food. Like a sensei? <laughs> oh, what, for sprinkles? And when all is said and done, there will be a battle. Oh my god, it actually fits. It's not racist if it works, right? <laughs> you will lift your box and compete in the broom cooking arena. The broom cooking arena? Just then another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. Uh, uh guys, uh, sorry, I, I'm late. I hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss. Quiet. Little class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue. You're in the fast track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? Yeah, I'm not sure this is okay to do, but it's fine. Mm, don't you recognize me. This is my third year in the school with you as my teacher. Everyone stares at him blankly. <laughs> Does no one remember me? I'm... <laughs> wow, he's, he's putting his butt right in his face, huh? You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. Let that be a lesson to you students that turning this is unacceptable. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny... Who? Who? You turn to see the student Sprinkles is referencing, who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. Hey, I think I think he's being really racist. <laughs> you guys heard that, right? He said something incredibly racist there. The class burst into laughter. Oh. Uh, <laughs> no, Clank, you rascal. Sprinkles walks in the classroom. Sprinkles walks in the classroom as everyone stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose into the air and takes a deep sniff. Hmm, your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. You've never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkle's reputation for being smart but tough is well known. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket, but what kind? It's... 
there's no other answer than chicken snack, right? <laughs> it must be the chicken snack. Always the chicken snack. You reach beneath your apron and return with a chicken snack in your hand. Sprinkle's eyes go wide as he locks onto it. His favorite. <laughs> well, well, well. I think there might be some competition for new star student. The furry professor immediately devours the snack, leaving your hand slick with a coating of warm doggy drool. I don't think it's okay for my teacher to lick me on day one. Day six. Sure. Thank you for subscribing. You see the other students eyeing you jealously, but pay no mind to them. If they wanted to succeed in life, they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog treat flavors on them at all times. Don't question it. Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Depends on the school's code of conduct. True, you gotta write these things carefully. If you don't, then teachers can just go around licking students however they want. Nothing to stop them. Uh, hey, packed nicely. There's still a seat here. It's... <laughs> Wait, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry about this, guys. I'm not, I'm not an ASMR expert, but for every Colonel Sanders line today, I'm going to have to do it as ASMR. It seems that no one has claimed this seat next to me. If you're interested, perfect. <laughs> Two good options, but which will you choose? I mean, <laughs> it's called a dating simulator, right? Don't get me wrong, I love stories about uh, best friends growing up and getting together, so sitting with the best friend, tight. But, them chicken, <laughs> those Kentucky Fried Packs are calling me. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, let's go for, let's go for Colonel Sanders. <laughs> That's ter terrible ASMR. I'm, yeah, <laughs> this is true. You move to take your seat by Colonel Sanders. Right. <laughs> It appears he brought no books, pens, or pencils. However, his perfect upright posture shows off a seriousness that makes you confident in his desire to learn. Okay. <laughs> uh, thanks for offering me this seat. I'm pretty sure packed nicely as a girl, but I'm just going to keep with the Patrick Warburton voice, okay? It's probably fine. <laughs> I'm not going to do it for every line. <laughs> I've only had two rules. Do all you can. And do it the best you can. It's the only way you ever get that feeling of accomplishing something. Oh, that's uh, so inspiring. A little off topic if you ask me, but okay. As soon as you've settled into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Uh, uh, uh think fast. It's time for a pop quiz. Nine quiz about me. <laughs> This incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you're ready for life at culinary school. Keep your knives sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question number one. If train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Ha! Huh. On the first day? What's on the first day? Oh, a pop quiz? Yeah, feels and seeing, doesn't it? Um... <laughs> Uh, extremely important. Looking at you, Pop. That's, that, that's right. Okay, that's not him saying that. <laughs> Forest is to tree as chicken is to... Uh, uh, uh... <laughs> um... <laughs> Why would... Forest be the tree. Okay, I, uh, yeah, okay. That's right, thank God, okay. <laughs> All right. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? I like to imagine that Sprinkles is like a full on like drill sergeant from a, from a military kind of film. I, I really like to imagine he's got that full like, are you looking at me, you slime nugget? <laughs> this guy is very similar to one of my lecturers. Oh dear. <laughs> Easy test? Well, I mean, you know, it's important to make sure they all know how to cook, I guess. Uh, what is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? Well, um, you know, I, 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 I have to guess it's not a meat tenderizer. A, a spork is pretty efficient, you know, that's all you need if you're going camping, including being a dog. Wait, what? <laughs> 
a comically oversized fork is, I mean, efficient. Efficient's probably not the right term, I guess. Pick chicken. Always pick chicken, but there's no option for chicken here. That's right. Okay, good. That food is best for a broken heart. <laughs> Anything as long as it's prepared with love and not too much salt. Camel meat. A pancake that looks like a silly face. Oh, dude. I mean, a pancake that looks like a silly face, right? Ooh. Ooh. That, I, that would fix my broken heart. Having said that, camel meat. That sounds interesting. I'm going to guess it's this one because... Right? That's right. Okay. Is Sprinkles a good boy? He's a talking dog that teaches at culinary school. He is the best boy. That's right. Okay. Wow. Was that the only answer that would work? Your total score is perfect score. Wow. Be honest. Did you cheat? You look You look up to see that Colonel Sanders has been watching you tally your score. He's impressed. I had to tally that score. Did I go to like a different, like a, like a regular, like primary school or something at some point? Or have I only ever been to culinary schools? Because if I had to really work that out and tally that up, that's not good. Um... I know we just met, but I have to confess, I think you have a beautiful brain. Oh my god. Hot diggity packs nicely. <laughs> you just scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that performance. May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch. Wow. The cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. It does, yeah. Uh, a delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. Mm, you smell that. That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Uh, everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was... Holy folks, I'd like to... An announcement. <laughs> hey! I was... It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. <laughs> but I... <laughs> lunch, lunch, lunch. I basically feel that Pop is like an orc from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> That's what the voice is. Uh, she said, shush. In honor of the new semester. I've prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. If it's... <laughs> if it's not fried chicken, I will give everyone in chat a thousand dollars. That must be the smell I smelled. Indeed, that smell. You hold your breath, waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented, but were the rumors true? Is this... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Wait, is Brian the secret formula? Interesting, interesting. Now that would be a game I'd be hyped to play if it started out as like a dating sim and then he started trying to like murder people. He started killing off the other students and you had to like stop him because he was like taking their pieces to turn into chicken. That'd be awesome. Your money is safe? Yeah, I had a feeling it might be. <laughs> Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. Its contents glimmer in the light. He made this bucket at home? I... <laughs> Piled high are huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. The aroma envelops you and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken. What a novel concept. What year is this set? Because KFC's been around for a long time, right? <laughs> looks, looks fairly modern, but... Okay. Your stomach begins to grumble as if to say, stop thinking and start eating. For years, I have been developing a secret recipe to the perfect fried chicken. I was going to say, for years, yeah. His hair is like grey. Like, he look, he's an adult. Like, everyone else pretty much looks like a teenager. Not him! <laughs> what age is this guy? Why is he at school? With us? <laughs> okay. By my calculation, nothing less than... Eleven herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I'll say about that. 
What? You think we want your stupid cigarette recipe, dude? <laughs> nah, my dude, nah. I'm just uh, drafting a last will and testament in case uh, one of those ingredients is a poison. Got him. <laughs> I got him. He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at his sick burn. You wait to see what zinger Aishklai has prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Uh, uh fuck. Bob's her. <laughs> yeah, I was just, like, writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I know at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. <laughs> you see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer. Colonel Sanders, get away from him, ye whore! I mean, ah, uh, shit. Uh, she realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants him all to herself. Oh, please. Well, Van Van, the if you don't want any. Uh, I'll take his. Oh, well, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. Easy now. There is enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in. So there's only like six. Seven. There's like seven of us if you count the robot, right? In the whole school? I, why do I ask? <laughs> why do I bother asking? You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of this bucket and sink your teeth into it. It's amazing. It's, oh my god. <laughs> I find out what the 11 herbs and spices are. They're all marijuana. Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Okay. Alone with your taste buds, gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Van Van looking like a Jojo character? That's true. <laughs> the real secret recipe is actually scribbled on rough bit of paper in a secured vault at KFC headquarters. Gotta be. Marijuana and brains. Now that's a, that's a recipe. Um, uh, right. I should... Swim toward the light. I think that'll kill me. I think I'll die. Um... Focus and meditate on this moment, trying to identify every flavor. Or, no, what it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart. That's a good question. Wait, what? It, it feels like this isn't the first time either. It feels like there's a choice to make between trying to go after his recipe and his business or go after his heart. <laughs> hmm. I'll go after the, the, fine. It's a dating simulator, guys. We have to go with the dating simulator. The flavors in your mouth are beautiful, pure, heavenly. Is that, is that, is that jizz? No, it's fine. Uh, oh, oh, what, what a guy. <laughs> Along with the flavors, you feel something that can only be described as love. For a man, for a flavor, are they the same? After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. Okay. <laughs> Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he's doing and allows you to break the silence. Uh, Colonel, I wondered if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. Uh, what exactly was on that chicken? <gasps> How bold to come out and ask. It said, oh my god. <laughs> See, he had that the whole time? It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. <laughs> it's just you and me here talking. I could keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester's only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. <laughs> He's clearly not going to give it up so easily, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know, I know what they say about secrets, Colonel. Shouldn't learning be fun? Aww. You've got Moxie. I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone and then leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. 
Just one ingredient, but you can't tell. I use damage. <laughs> tell me what it is. Tell me now. <laughs> Whoa, you'd never have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you searched. While you're wrapped up in that. If you'd get some, if you search. It sounds like it is marijuana, right? It sounds like it's drugs. While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and stare at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. It sounds like you have some big plans. Add up. Really? Big, uh, 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 love for chicken. <laughs> I dare say the biggest. <laughs> I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Oh, leave your mark on me. <laughs> Nag him to show you your, to show your own strength. Uh, woe him with a big idea to add an additional ingredient to really spice things up. Be modest but thoughtful. Interesting. That's the length of the word, Brian. I think you're right. <laughs> Interesting. Um, right, so what should my personality be? Uh, modest but thoughtful? Well, oh, I think I did it right. Well, I just wanted to show you that I really enjoyed your food. Now that you've got his attention, the flavors were complex but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery. That was perfect. I appreciate the compliment. Back nicely. <laughs> you saying my name or you, you complimented me back there, eh? <laughs> I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. We should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. You step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. What the fuck is going on here? Look at this. Okay. <laughs> Look at this place. It's magnificent. Finally, we get to show our stuff. Wait a second. Oh, no. We have to show our stuff. What if I totally blow it? Oh, you're not going to blow anything. Mix up maybe kisses to the crowds of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Welcome, students, to the Kickin' Arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off, maggots. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Oh, I didn't even get to make the choice there. Hey, uh, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is. Me and you, if it wasn't clear. Wanna be my partner? Oh, sure, pack nicely. I'll prepare our station. Oh, yeah, you will. <laughs> Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Yeah. Oh my, two potential partners. I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. It looks like you'll have to pick four. Friend duties could be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Who do you want us to be Miriam's partner? Oh, fuck off, Pop, right? <laughs> Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Clank today. It's okay, I already ate. It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this juncture. <laughs> Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Ooh, look at his face. Ooh, that dude's only got one thing on his brain. Maybe I should have gone with Pop, at least he wouldn't have known what to do with his penis, even if he had the chance. Clank, that dude fucks. Mm -mm. You know, he's just gonna pump a dub. Per Miriam. Well, I'm a bad friend. Uh, Hold on there, fella. We don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clank may not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. I think there's something horny and horny about him. Oh, God, look at him. Oh, no. Tissue, I hardly know you. Clank judders and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. A panel shakes loose? I think he just jizzed. In school. Oh. oh, looks like you two will be fine. 
Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. All right, you two. For today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. Maggots. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Burn this school down before it gets any worse, please. Which test do you suggest your partner, Colonel Sanders? Ooh. <laughs> Stick tartar seems easy enough. It's fancy and you don't even need to cook it. Using octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind. Your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. Does, does KFC do mashed potatoes? I know they do gravy. Gravy's the one thing I like from KFC. Okay. Well, I, I guess that. Aha. <laughs> I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. How about my vagina? I, uh, maybe some mashed potatoes. And gravy. I'll give you my gravy. Uh, I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beat red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. You know what? I don't really like. I don't think I don't know if they do it around here in KFC's here, but like, I can imagine KFC gravy being good with mashed potatoes. Interesting. <laughs> but it's not working. I don't want KFC. You're not advertising isn't working on me. <laughs> I'll go get the potatoes. No, please let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. Uh, Jesus, it takes a moment to switch these voices in your head. Uh, uh, fuck. <laughs> oh, God. Um. Oh, looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business, you fucking trash bitch. <laughs> Sanders hurt his money business, and you'd better keep your fingers off my man. <laughs> Let someone call from me. <laughs> oh, no, jeez, Van Van. While I'm over here crushing back nicely streams, you were supposed to be talk taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? They look like Team Rocket. <laughs> They're literally just Team Rocket. Why is this music happening? What's going on? Stop! <laughs> Colonel Sanders returns arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his, effect his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there, Rashly. Van Van, are we going in a quartet instead of a duet now? Oh, actually, no, it looked like practice they struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. Them. <gasps> them. I could be a man. Perfect. <laughs> you know how it is. Uh, you, you know how it is. These are young amateur chefs that learn mentoring. I would love if this was a fucking RPG somehow. <laughs> I was just going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up my level hard out it. Don't be all right, man! Personally, I don't know what's going on with the Colonel Sanders, but if you ask me, I would make a better partner for you than this thing. It is a position to sell for your station. Don't forget to dig down. We would cast complimentary shadows. We fit together like a thigh and a drumstick. Yeah, I can already see your thighs, you dank, stink ass whore. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense. But one thing is clear, she's coming for the Colonel, and if you don't watch out. Oh my god, actually, it's really going too hard. You need to some, ask for some backup here before things get ugly. <laughs> Turn to Colonel Sanders, hug of hugs in your time of need. Turn to Miriam, your forever bestie who always has your back. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, I, uh, 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 I'm here to learn and to express myself via my cuisine, not bigger with prima donnas. Partners who were chosen at the beginning of class. So let's all respect the format, okay? You turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm you're on the same page. I chose Colonel Sanders, and Colonel Sanders chose me. Isn't that right? A businessman respects all fair agreements from contracts to handshakes. I took on Pax nicely as my partner for this activity, and I stand by it. Based on your team's behavior, I'd say you're perfect for each other. Neither of you has packed nicely his natural talent or their loyalty. Oh, shit! Get fucked, Ashkly, you stank-ass bitch! To being defended by Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud and full of arousal. <laughs> you look for sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis in their short but sturdy nature. <gasps> You look down at your station and realize that in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and creeper flavor. As if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hands. He's holding a beautiful white parcel of gravy bar. I don't want your of smooth, fried gravy. Smoldering, you're nearly perfect. 
<laughs> Gravy flows down the mouth of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. Oh! <laughs> Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. The most efficient of all cooking utensils, don't you know? You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set free. What? <laughs> Together you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Aishkali with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the sparkful of mashed potatoes right into Aishkali's stupid, beautiful face. Vaughn, Vaughn! Do something, do something! Scooping up a figureful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with such a mu so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, packed nicely. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. You throw one more spoonful, you'll both be better prepared to eat from it from wherever it lands. <laughs> what a handsome man, the Colonel looks okay too, I suppose. <laughs> hey Mike, how's it going? I'm having quite a time here. <laughs> Can I have potatoes face? I it's amazing that KFC they they uh, they didn't make it themselves, but they commissioned this game from somebody officially. And yet <laughs> that character feels problematic, right? <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter. Bad Van rushes back over a covered dish in his hand. <laughs> Is that a battle axe? Mashed potatoes with gravy, pathetic. In just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my speciality. Bria's tentacle of octopus and my silky saltwater sauce. Plated on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. This game is a fever dream. Yep. <laughs> yep. That about sums it up. What is happening? <laughs> uh, you've ignored me for, for too long. Uh, that ends now. It is I who will have first bite, and you will all look at it in a, with envy. <laughs> the interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No, don't! Something about uh, something uh, what was his voice? <laughs> something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed. I may have been turned in the may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late. It has been eaten. Oh, uh, I uh, think I left something in the oven. Oh, I don't feel so good. It killed him. <laughs> It killed him. <laughs> Give me a minute. <laughs> Everyone take a step back. Don't take another bite. When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. Pop whimpses in pain for just a moment, then it is almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Yipsy. Tastes like poison. The entire class is gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are as motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against all poisons. <laughs> I'm not okay. <laughs> They said three days, right? This is only day one still. Okay, that's fine. What the hell is even going on? Dude, I mean... It, <laughs> it is hard to say. Such talented voice actors for this game. Thank you. <laughs> no, Van Van, not Van Van. That wasn't Van Van. That was just the random student. He just burst in and ate it. Van Van, he, he didn't... He's not very good at cooking. But he's alive. Uh... uh 
fuck, what was his voice? Um, uh, I'm not sure the professor's here to make enough money. Uh, 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 hello, I, I just turned into a, a guest over here. Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sutter approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. What did I go through? <laughs> what? Like, for real? Come on. Does that sign say Kentucky Fried Chicken? Um, oh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yeah, no, it does. <laughs> yes, yeah. No, that is that is what it says. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> at night, the school... Why is it nighttime? Okay, I guess, you know, three-day semesters. you got to take the whole thing. Yeah, mm, no offense. I see why I didn't pay attention this last time. Or this time. It's not... The best game in the world. <laughs> um, it, it's dark and more than a little spooky. Okay, there is a ghost around, yeah. Colonel Sander stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know, they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. <laughs> Tasting them. It reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Good, Colonel Sanders. Yes, back nicely. There's something I need to tell you. No chance. <laughs> Hold it right there. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef the world's ever seen. And every day since I have been working toward that dream, day and night, never stopping, never resting, also lifting a lot of weights. Like, so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all of our hearts, that our souls may grant them like wishes of floating on a shooting star. Uh, hey, no, uh, you, shut up! I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Oh, are uh, we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that! I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance you hear a long, sad sigh. <laughs> Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. Guys, the the sport monsters here. The sport monsters here to fight a hero. Ah! I uh, I think I left the French door open. Later, nerds. threatened me just as I was letting down my garden connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Poison for Colonel. Colonel's poison. <laughs> ah, the poison for Colonel. Colonel's poison. <laughs> exactly. Um, I don't, uh, uh, right. Okay. <laughs> I don't have a voice for you. <laughs> I don't have a Oh god, how are we gonna survive this? That's the most efficient cooking utensil of all. Um Be afraid. Be very afraid of me. Because I'm a monster. See. Is I uh, rhyming on purpose or is that just a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax any further, it's a turn-based fight sequence, oh my god! I did say I would love if this turned into an RPG. Not not quite there, is it? But Oh it is! Oh my god! I will attack. You decide to go on the attack. Yes. Which attack will you use? Ah, uh, what? No! I wanted to like shoot flames at him or something. Not cook with love! Cook with love does one damage. Okay. It just got real. <laughs> Oh, Lord. <laughs> that attack really upsets Portman. I would imagine, yep. 
Sport Monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. It's nice that they have non-binary characters. Really forward thinking, huh? Uh, you take one damage. How much health do I? You know what? Attack again. You decide to go on the attack. It worked last time, right? <laughs> yep. Kirkwood Love does one damage. Sport Monster won't forget this. Sport Monster is really th feeling threatened by your attack. Sport Monster focuses their mashed mind and draws in energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? I will. I, I will attack. <laughs> you decide to go on the attack. I do. Which attack will you use? I guess I'll use Cook with Love. <laughs> Cook with Love does one damage. At this rate, the semester will probably be over before this fight is. Spark Monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble, they go on the attack once again. Spark Monster uses all utility tensile. You take two damage from the attack. If you take much more damage, you're not going to survive the battle. Attack? <laughs> you decide to go on the attack. Again. <laughs> Cook at level of spawn damage. Spork monster is oozing cheese sauce onto the floor. So what is he made of? Because there's there's sporks in here, but there's there's a lot of other stuff. Is it just cheese sauce? Okay, onto the lawn of the quad. I wonder who's going to have to clean that up. Feeling vulnerable, Spork monster launches prepares for its ultimate attack rounded edge. Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here. Oh, thank God. Cur <coughs> Oh, that hurt. <laughs> Colonel Sanders summons the energy of 1,000 chickens. Ah! <laughs> Pot Pie Power Pinch. Pot Pie Power Pinch does 10 damage. The sport monster is defeated. Oh, uh, save me. An injured sport monster spews steam into the night. Um... Interesting. Will Colonel Sander... You know, he's a ruthless businessman, right? Surely he would more appreciate it more if I finish him, right? Spare him. He managed to tamp down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Uh, be gone, beast. Uh, don't you come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow? Oh, fuck. <laughs> I won't forget this. And I certainly won't be back, like you said. The Spork Monster scuttles off into the night. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to sign it out is Borco. Hmm. Borco, that name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, <gasps> holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. Why did it take like three and a half turns for Colonel Sanders to jump in, huh? Oh god, he's in my bedroom. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you would have made it without him. What a guy. <laughs> oh. Yeah. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you're tucked in tightly. <laughs> uh, good night, my girl. <laughs> in your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there instructing your love. Dreams are weird. Zzz. Oh my god. <laughs> you wake up day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonitions? Premonitions of... Okay. And then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. Okay. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the sport monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay. I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be a... I think I might like Clank. Yep. <laughs> uh, like... Like him? Like, like, like? Wait, uh. <laughs> I know, it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him. Like, like him. We got a talking after class. And he's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his high school? Yes. <laughs> I, yeah, sh yeah. I think I could have guessed. Uh, no. Uh, but that does make complete sense. 
Yeah, but he was so popular that he was voted prom king at a school he didn't even go to. And was also the convertible. And was also the convertible that he himself rode in at the front of the homecoming parade. He was the convertible that he himself rode in? What? That didn't... Okay. Uh, uh, Peter! Sorry, I need to get the voice back. Uh, Peter! Uh, I'm thinking maybe something got lost in pressure cooker tra language translation there. <laughs> uh, either way, and maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy, like I am with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy in school, the most famous student to ever attend University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, you're a thing now? Uh, we definitely connected yesterday. Ah, sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be a do you, I guess? Does she believe me? I can't tell. <laughs> Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Is he just... <laughs> he is just a transformer. That would be a twist. That's what I want. That's what I want out of my KFC dating simulator games, guys. Oh, uh, well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? No. Your bestie's eyes light up. A secret ingredient? Uh, yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wondering. This can't be good. He told me about his passion for spices, secret spices. The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. And he said that if it was a, if he said it was a powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals, and that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Mario, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. He was so nice, he even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later, when I cooked with them, a very strange feeling came over me, and the flavor was unlike anything I'd ever tasted. That's drugs. <laughs> I think you're being very liberal with the bidding of spices here. Whatever. Anyway, we both shared an interest in cooking, so we've stayed in touch, you know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. And besides, I only know the one ingredient, so I doubt it'd be much use to anyone. Please, please, please. It would mean the world to me. No one has to know it came from you or from Colonel Sanders. Uh, I should make up a fake ingredient. I'm all in on the Colonel. I'm, I've accepted the fact that I'm a bad friend, by now. You quickly think of a fake ingredient, Neymar. I don't know. How about... It was, uh, I have Newt. I know. Sounds like some kind of witch's potion. But what can you do? I have Newt. Wow. Her eyes light up, imagining such a thing, and you figure that you've satisfied her curiosity, and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone so that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. Before you can ask her to confirm that she was definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossom puddles fill the air. Oh my gosh! <laughs> It's Colonel Sanders. He's arriving at school. <laughs> Run to him. Run to him. Be with him. You decide that the best way to show Miriam how serious you and Colonel Sanders are would be to run up to him. Surely he'll sweep you up onto the back of his stallion and you'll ride away together. That'll show her good. Oh, okay. I shouldn't have picked that option. Oh, Colonel, my Colonel. <laughs> However, your sudden movements surprise the horse Nick rears up, kicking you directly in the face. <laughs> the force of the blow completely knocks you out cold. In the darkness, you see a vision. Ooh, pe uh, uh, pe uh, nicely. I'm here to deliver you a message. Not this guy. It is important that you remember exactly as I say it. If you forget, the world could end. So you know it's serious. I have been trapped in a realm beyond, but a great prophecy relies on my return. Only you can save me. All you have to do is repeat my name three times. And that name is... Oh, but before you can continue, you suddenly wake. Ah, jeez. Ah, you awake to find Colonel Sanders tending to you. He roused you back to life with the satchel of secret spices. Or is that just his natural seasoned musk? Lean in for a kiss. Oh, dear. Compliment the craftsmanship of his horse's shoes. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't be running a horse to school. Maybe you shouldn't be running up to animals you don't know. It's hard to say who was in the wrong here. But one thing is for sure, that Colonel Sanders is pretty dreamy. Uh, uh, that horse has beautiful shoes. I could really feel how smooth and sturdy they were when they were pressing into my face. 
That's nice to hear. No one truly appreciates good craftsmanship anymore. And with that, Colonel Siders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals, Ashkali and Van Van, are doing something bad. By the way they're hiding, you know it must be really bad. Like counterfeiting recipes, bad. Experimenting with restricted ingredients, bad. Summoning a demon, bad? You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulder, but he sees you coming. Oh, wow there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Uh, uh, uh... Oh, why don't you just make like a bee in my drone wax, honey? Well, that's a good one. Um... <laughs> Uh, uh, tell them to stop acting immature. You immediately dress the rivals down for their immature behavior. Oh, uh, culinary skills be respected. This kind of nonsense is a waste of everyone's time. Now you've upset, upset them. Oh, you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules. I'm not sure you'd know a good meal of it, are you? <clears throat> Oh, being the best chef in the world... Her voice keeps changing. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. You get a, You finally get a look at what they were hiding and you instantly recognize it. It's a book just like the one you found after your encounter with the Spork Monster. <laughs> oh yes, the Spork Monster. Uh, that's the same book that I found last night in the quad. Actually, I immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. That book is a family heirloom, and its contents are secret. Oh, thank you for subscribing. <laughs> you notice that they haven't just been studying the book. They've got Pop pinned to the wall, and they're testing, they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. They're playing. Before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Beep, beep. <laughs> Clack must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. <laughs> Hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts. Uh, you watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. Bzzzwomp. Who do you think you're talking to? What, 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 I can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language. Not even from a stand mixer. Womp womp. Now your mother was a stand mixer. <laughs> We're bzzzed. <laughs> Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. With what? Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me. But I'm not interested in either of them. Ice Clyde's tone is completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know this is a ruse, right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena, at least. Or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. <laughs> Maybe I could help you with your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to signal the true start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all over town, and my tiny legs are very, very tired. But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. Rub his furry dog belly. He loves it. What? <laughs> that was the narrator talking to me. Uh, Sprinkle stops in his tracks and sniffs the air around you. Something has him in a trance. It's the scent left on you from Colonel Sanders. Sprinkles jumps on you and licks your face. Please don't. That's sexual assault. Down, boy. Down. Of toppin. Of toppin? <laughs> that command showed up at Colonel Sanders and snapped Sprinkles out of his trance. I wonder what's up with that. I think they were in the Third Reich together. <laughs> it sounded German and I'm very scared. And also, this is clearly set before KFC is a thing, so it must be a long time ago. And therefore, yep. Sprinkles is a Nazi. Got it. <laughs> sorry, I got a little carried away. Oh, wait, sorry. I should change his voice accordingly. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite pal, the chicken. You want to pay attention to the lesson. Truly, you do. Which is why in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name. What? <laughs> what kind of alternate reality is this? But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders and you miss most of the important parts. When you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Vettel packs nicely. That name sounds great in German accent. Uh, naturally, this appears to you to be a simple a sample platter. Which item do you want to sample? Uh... <laughs> I mean, surely the dog biscuit is for him. The water is to wash whatever you're testing down with and the pepper is the correct one, right? 
A brightly colored pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way, so naturally you reach out, you reach out, grab it, and need it right away. However, your body is not prepared for the heat. The pepper is triggered an intense spice hallucination. It feels like forever as you trip through the universe. My friend. <laughs> This guy again? I'm here to give you an important message. <laughs> you must avenge my death and fulfill your destiny. All you must do is cough, cough. I was saying to fulfill your destiny, all you must do is cough, cough. Uh, 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 sorry, I think I've got some spice stuck in my throat. It's fine. I'll work through. Cough. <laughs> to fulfill. Cough. The prophecy. Cough. Cough. You must. To feel yourself begin to regain consciousness. Ah, oh, man. You come to and find everyone staring at you. Uh. <coughs> that pepper was the last of its kind on earth and now it's gone forever. You think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. I was meant to eat the dog biscuit. Uh. <laughs> we all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim, and your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared. Uh, uh, uh why a time to pitch to cook off? The level of theatrics with these two is off the charts. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, but a lunchtime competition, eh? Count me in. If I have to wipe the tables with you fools before I set my lunch down on it, then so be it. I ain't that the fool, you're the fool, fool. Good one, Van Van. I like your gumption back nicely. Hell yeah. I'll be watching your performance. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. <laughs> now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sports and court. A sports and court. That sounded perfect in the German accent. Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least, not until we turn on the timer! Just then a timer, a light blasts you in the face, flashing the words timer ready. That's what I'm talking about. Arrow! Uh, <laughs> uh, I stand corrected. The hard way builds solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. And that's an original quote by me, in case anyone was wondering. I hope its message lifts you to victory. Uh, uh, oh, like a time and I was formed under pressure. Now is my chance to shine! I will defeat you myself. Oh, the battle music. Oh, the tight battle music. You had his chicken and you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one. And you're feeling like you can really impress him again here. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. Oh, God. It always boils to 100 seconds after you turn the heat on. Um, it, 100 degrees to see. That's right. But how would you even have gotten into the school without knowing that? That's true. Uh, Vina gets to rub my furry belly. Let that in off enticing offer motivate you. You're going to need to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. How many herbs and spices did he say you used? Eleven! That's right. You might not know all of the ingredients yet, but at least you're headed in the right direction. Yes. Tail wagging intensifies? <laughs> now that you've got some basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers the most flavor? Uh... Trust. That's wrong! Ah! I'm begging you to get it together. Get it? I'm a dog. It's never the wrong time for some dog jocks. Uh, okay. Uh, your classmates are rooting for you, but Aishkla is simply stronger and faster than you. <laughs> That's not matter for cooking. You better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you never to forget what, where you came from. Every day you meditate on his advice and draw energy from that place. Now what would be a great time to harness that energy? So where does it come from? Uh, 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 small time where big dreams are born. That's right. This is your shot. And you're not going to miss it. I'm not going to miss my shot. I'm not going to miss my shot. Aru! You're trying to shut out the noise of the arena and focus on your kicking. What is the sign of success? Uh, sizzling? Yeah. That's wrong. No! <laughs> Don't make me get the spray bottle! Next question. <laughs> you notice Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, back nicely. <laughs> he's actually cheering you on. Which would be awesome, except knowing that he's watching you makes you totally forget what you were doing. Now that you can think about it, Colonel Sanders. How many spitfuls of gravy would it take to... Uh, uh, what were you thinking? Get back into the competition. Grr. You're standing in the desert with uh, one only desert cookbook. What do you... What you take? What a hug! <laughs> uh, no, right. You know what? Shouldn't you be focused on the challenge? You're falling mad. So, uh, uh, you Colonel Sanders exchange what advice. What does that have to do with counting spectacular fried chicken? You're struggling to keep it up. At the next station over, Ashley has already begun plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. To make up a time, you toss your biscuit dough into a stand mixer as you do the crowd gasps. Hey, yikes! This is... I know you love nothing more than being, seeing a fellow appliance utilized in the kitchen battle, but sometimes that may sacrifice the personal touch. Where you might not have any hands, but pack nicely does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. That's an easy way and a hard way. 
You don't get far by doing the easy way. When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand to the mixer to rescue your dough before it's overmixed. Pick this in now! But you're not fast enough and your hand gets stuck. It's immediately crushed by the quickly spinning beaters. There's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. And Colonel Sanders shakes his head and shame. What you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. What? Everyone stop what you're doing now as the battle is over? It can't be. Well, I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart, look at your hand. Your simple cat's gone. Uh, oh, that's too bad. And here I am with a completed dish ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. No, no, it wouldn't be, compa it wouldn't be fair to compare the two on account of Pack Nicely's injury. You see Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he locks onto the dish. But I suppose you would at least tell us what you prepared. Uh, well, because I'm the sweetest, let's grip straight to dessert. Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of delights, taking you on a journey of flavour that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. I was going to ask back nicely to do in the honour, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this creamer of this creamer of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden beneath. Inside, you find a delicate fried cheese croquet atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream, two ways, tender nougat, and pearls of blueberry jelly. 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 Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger in the chocolate sauce. Simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Aishkali? Oh, you hey. As he places his sauce-covered finger into his lips, Aishkali leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. Um... Put yourself between them. Oh. Uh. Internalize the rage you feel. Your rage burns so intensely within your eyes they burst into flames. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash and they fall off your face, which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester, perhaps forever. Embarrassed and ashamed by your performance, not to mention your crispy fried bra, you were on for the quad to be alone. My eyebrows burst into flames. My hand is crushed on my eyebrow burst into flames. The beautiful weather feels like an insult inside of you a storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Aishkali are in love and <laughs> decided to get married. And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but from that run-in with the mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. Oh, uh, uh, I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. What? <laughs> I'll never be a master chef. Failure is part of life. Not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed at anything before? Kind of. That's exactly what I think. Well, then think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you enrolled in culinary school, incredibly handsome, successful, motivated. <laughs> well, handsome, sure, I was born that way. But I've walked other paths and arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life, but I failed as an obstetrician. I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. Were you in Phoenix Wright, East Attorney, you feel like you'd fit. I was passionate about livestock, but I even failed as a mule handler. That one was especially humiliating. Mules can be so cruel. I lost my business partner to a gunfight, <laughs> and I lost my innocence when I picked up a firearm and put a bullet in my rival. He survived. For a while, anyhow. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume that I've got it all together, which is true now, but it hasn't always been. Sounds like this guy could really use a hug. I resolved then that I was going to amount to something. No matter, no amount of hours, labor or money would deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders changed focus, you can see something ignite inside of him. A burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Just as your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening shadowy presence. Battle scar from the night before, you prepare for the worst. It's the Spork Monster. Borko? <laughs> Borko? It, it is I. Uh, it is I. I know I said I wouldn't come back. And after the whole fight to the death thing, maybe you don't really want to see me anymore, but I just wanted to say I was wrong to attack you. I apologize. I know what it's like having to always look over your shoulder. <laughs> Monster problems, am I right? Uh, thanks, Borko. I'm glad there are no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark of night can really rile a person up. I also want... Why in the hell did they make a KFC game? It's a very good question. I have no idea. <laughs> I also want to apologize for the way I switched right into attack mode. I know that you're strong. And cooking school can put a burst under a lot of stress. 
I used I actually used to go to this school. I wasn't always a spark monster, you see. Oh. Uh, I don't believe it. You were human once? Well, no. I was a golden retriever. <laughs> but I was still a student. Until one day some mean kids with a magic spell book cast a third enchantment on me. And I was forever transformed. A uh, magic spell book? Precisely. I procured a copy for myself. But somewhere along the way I lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you. Respect it. You're a powerful chef and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No, you should be protecting the innocent from... <laughs> and by bad, you should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them in through sorcery and guile. If you need me, don't fear. I will be there, like the night, like the darkness, in the shadows. I am the hero you deserve, but not the one you need right now. It sounds like there are bad cooks in the kitchen of life. Pack nicely. Together, I'm sure we can defeat them. I'll shoot them. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. A personal invite. You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. Oh shit, is the school day over? Oh my god, there's a statue of a chicken. There's a tiny colonel. A camel. A mountain. To man, man in front of a mountain. Ashes. Urn. Blake. Okay. Stepping inside Sanders' home. I'm surrounded by his... I love you too. You're talking to Colonel Sanders, right? <laughs> Stepping inside Sanders' home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. It uh, looks like you live such an interesting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day could be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Well, there is something. It's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with. I'm trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Go to Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish you might be describing. What else do they serve at KFC? <laughs> it's meant to uh, it's meant to pair with something spicy or something crispy. Both, perhaps. Now you've got them right where you want them. Should you reveal your new creation or keep it a secret just for you? What if he turns out to be a dickhead that wants to just take advantage of me, you know? I'll keep it a secret. Actually, I've said too much. Please, forget I ever said anything. You can practically hear Colonel Sanders' heart beating in his chest. He tries to act demure, but his facade begins to crack. I can appreciate a good secret, of course. In fact, I've got many, nearly a dozen, in my fried chicken recipe alone. But I would hope that you could learn to trust me with yours. Well, I suppose you did share a secret agreement with me yesterday, so that'd be only fair. Colonel Sanders' face grows serious. Ah, oh, yes, about that. You see? Yes, Colonel. I haven't been completely honest with you. The secret I told you was a fake. Oh no, the ingredient you shared with Miriam. It wasn't true. I didn't share the true ingredient with her anyway. I love you and never will leave you. Shadow 2021. Oh. <laughs> You're angry with Colonel Sanders for lying, but the fact that you revealed his secret shows that he was probably right to do so. But I didn't. You mean, it wasn't one of the real 11 sacred herbs and spices. You see, we'd only just met. I had to make sure you were trustworthy, capable of keeping my most important secret. To me, my recipes are priceless. Well, I have something to confess. That secret ingredient you told me, I, I shared it with my with Miriam, my bestie. But I didn't! What? what? I, I told her a fake one! Mm. Oh, unfortunately, I already knew this. I was very disappointed. But now that you've come clean, we can start building our relationship as fellow chefs again. But I didn't! This is bullshit. <laughs> I, I promise to be honest from here on out. I really do. I'm counting on you. In that case, blah. <laughs> I present to you my original coleslaw. Okay. <laughs> Love for the KFC gang and pies. Oh, thank you. <laughs> the shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders' Lux hideaway. Magnificent. <laughs> Together you chow down on the creamy slaw. <laughs> Together you chow down on the creamy slaw. Until just a spoonful remains in the bowl. There's nothing more sexual than that sentence in the universe. <laughs> Do you mind if I hold on to the last bite? I'd like to have it around so that I can admire its taste later and think back on this moment. He's going to reverse engineer the whole fucking recipe. Sick bastard. You could offer to make him more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. Uh, sure. Why not? Please make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a minute. You realize that now would be the perfect time to do some snooping. Around the room are various items that you can look closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotions. Tap on an item to discover more about the colonel. Oh, there's a bunch here. What's on the table? What's that? 
A lock of silver hair is woven through the teeth of the comb. Upon further inspection, you realize that the hair therein isn't just silvery in color. It's actually made from spun silver. What? Tap on them to discover more about the colonel. Um, what's this? This must be where he keeps the secret recipe. You think for a moment, what number is important to Colonel Sanders? Then it dawns on you. As soon as you turn the dial to 11, 11, 11 to see if it opens. Inside it, you find a single note. Can chicken be prepared sashimi style? Hmm. Tap on that and discover more about the Colonel. You notice a very realistic stuffed chicken sitting on the corner table. When you pick it up, you realize it isn't just realistic, it's real. Taxidermy. Must have been important to Colonel Sanders when it was alive. A little note clipped to the chicken's foot reads, The true state bird of the great state of Kentucky. Tap on and discover more about the colonel. Wait, can I close? You open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. You take one off its hanger and try it on. Oh dear. The jacket is a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in his scent. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they meant? Before you could look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he's been working on. He wants you to taste it. You try to act casual until he asks you why you're wearing his jacket. I don't usually loan those out, but I must say, it does look good on you. <gasps> oh crap, the jacket. You forgot to take it off. Uh, um, uh, 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 shit. I'm cold. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to intrude. I just got a little cold and thought this might warm me up. Colonel Sanders smiles and scoots closer to the fireplace. It's warm by the fire. Why don't you come a little closer? Suddenly, everything feels like it's moving too fast. Final exams are tomorrow. You should be thinking about what you're going to cook. Oh, I should be home studying. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leaving Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Colonel! Mm. Yes, back to sleep. I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow. You talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. Dream sequence. Oh, no. Zzzz. <laughs> Right. You wake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast and your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's meticulous. I'm really hungry right now. <laughs> Jesus, I am starving. <laughs> uh, you taste Colonel Sanders' food and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. Say that we're the perfect match. How presumptuous. My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Such confidence, such grace. Could it be the world's greatest gift to cookery? Flatter him? Ah, yes, I thought he'd like that. You know, I think we might make a great team. A single tear begins to pull the corner of his eyes as he gazes out the window. But the right business partner. I know I can't fail. Business partner. Could he be talking about you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears. Unable to speak, the only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. There's still one more day of school, after all. The University of Cooking School Academy for Learning wits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? Oi. Because I had one heck of a night. I've been so desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something had happened. Uh, it's okay, I was just. But now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get you up to speed in the saga of Miriam. Sure, but... You will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date. Oh, I think I can believe that. Since I've been partnered up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. Of course, I told him, you had better keep your dials turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of guy, Earl. But he was interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure, I can get to know the little metallic guy. Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends, but things quickly spiraled out of control. Did you just say skydiving as if that's a typical first date to go on with a talking pressure cooker? <laughs> And now I'm not really sure where we stand. You don't give Miriam time to tell her whole story, however. Bottling up the details of your own line is just too much to bear. And I went on a date, uh, <clears throat> And, uh, I went on a date, too. Back to Colonel Sanders' house, where I spent the night with him. <gasps> you what? Nothing happened, but the emotional connection. Wowzers. Mm. Miriam tells you to move on from this whole Colonel Sanders obsession and focus on school. Is it being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong? You don't want to be right. After a short argument, you both agree to go your separate ways. Oh dear. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. My god. Look at her thighs! <laughs> Jesus. Imagine them making a KFC horror game. I wish. I wish this was like Doki Doki Literature Club, Literature Club and just went full on terror. And Colonel Sanders was like murdering the other students and cooking them into chicken. Uh, you can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not quite grasp that fact. Because you know he's Pop. Well, it's swirly. It sounds delicious. 
Oh, it's great. I'll give you a one right away. I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. Uh, sprinkles is a dog and a treat. Oh, you can get your swirly dips, too. Uh, why don't you pick on someone your own size? Am I her size? She's got thighs of steel. Because I'm literally the biggest person at this school. Audrey, is that horse that Gordo Sanders rides to school? But you would dare pick on such a gentle, beautiful creature. You've got some nerve packed nicely, suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. It's not defenseless, it kicked me in the face. Uh, now you're twisting my words, now I won't have it. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince with pain. It doesn't look like you can go on cooking with that. Might as well just give up. I'll never give up. Never. Colonel Sanders arrives just as it appears things are close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? Back nicely. How's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form this afternoon. Uh, aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday, I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? But what about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? It was clear that you're passionate about how your food was received. That's a, uh, hmm. Oh, uh, that's a lot of words to say it was bland. Excuse me, back nicely. I'm more than capable to speak for myself. Maybe you should let me tell you more of my thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine foods. See you inside, back nicely. Annoyed by Colonel's inability to see Ashkali for who you know she really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself for how slighted you feel by that interaction with Ashkali, you take out the spell book you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Uh, mm -hmm. Wow, what's that book? Looks like bad news. <laughs> uh, it's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful? I think I've evolved her voice into Entrapta from She-Ra. <laughs> I can think of one surefire way to find out. You open to a page covered with Archean warnings. Cast only in case of extreme emergency, it says around the edges of the page. I could use the spell that says it will erase anyone I choose from all of my memories. If I could scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. That is way drastic! Couldn't you do something else? Like, anything else? Not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger? Okay, fine, it is drastic. But desperate times call for desperate measures. You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you. Pretty good excuse to try it out. No. <laughs> you take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room, waiting for the students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. Uh, God, where have we got to with this voice? Oh, yeah. I want you all to know. I, I feel something of a pro of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. This cute little nose scratches up and he begins to breathe quickly. Um, reach for some old homework to give him as a snack. Uh, wait to see what... Yeah, okay. You reach inside your bag and grab some homework from last semester that you forgot to turn in. Sprinkles immediately goes for it and gobbles the sheet of paper like it's a piece of fresh chicken rawhide. I have, I apologize for that out of burst. I know it seems cliche, but not much in this world satisfies like ungraded work. My mind packed nicely. What were you studying? Something with cinnamon? Oh, I have been sitting in on, uh, hmm. Oh, I have been sitting in on a lecture series around the art of cake baking. How insightful. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Pack Nashley, for reminding me as a doll of this indispensable piece of wisdom, you see. But before you can go any further, Miriam's love travel spells out, uh, spills over into the class. Sprinkles is interrupted by words and sparks coming from the back of the room. I told you to save it for after class! Bzz, bzz. You think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? It's Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. Where? But now, you had to show off your cool kid friends Jeff and Joan. J and J forever. Watch us form a triangle mid as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Bzz, bzz. Yeah, well, that doesn't make a great day. Beep, were. Then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can all hold hands as you pedal down the mountain, or off a cliff for all I care. Sad beep. <laughs> Clang begins to shudder. Steam begins to pour out of the gaps in his panels, and then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. Beep, bzz. Oh, God. No amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that, Clank. Huh? Clank burps out a completely deep-fried sneaker. Considering that he himself has wheels, not feet, it's not entirely clear where it came from. <laughs> uh, in terms of deep-fried deep footwear, I guess it looks okay. You mean deep-fried? 
Clank slowly rolls out of the zoom or the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see that entire thing go down. Oh, we did. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over the final day of school. Well, Zvel, that was unfortunate. But we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition challenge, challenge exam! TM. <laughs> I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Yes, time approaches. See you all in the arena. But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Hi, uh, Miriam. You okay? Ah, uh, oh, I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug, spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. Oh my god, she's literally entrapped her from She-Ra. Wow. <laughs> How could he embarrass me in class like that in front of everyone? She loves machines. She loves tiny food. Oh my god. <laughs> our tiny Coco is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke, even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. Boy, <laughs> I know that you think this, but I'm going to say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Uh, hey and yo, we're going to cross through this final test and hit the carpool light to success city. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> You're not going to saddle up on Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me? Oh, of course not. Well, maybe, sorry. But uh, I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it. And a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. It's not Pop or Clank or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year. So what? You're a special person who shouldn't shuttle for the first person to show a little interest, anyhow. Like I'm doing with the Colonel. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. And I bet the Professor Doug is going to love it up. While you were pep talking, Miriam, you completely missed lunch, but that's okay because you had a better idea how to spend the time before the exam. You've decided to head to the arena early to practice a dish. This is it, the location of your final challenge. A test of will, a test of courage, a test of talent, and a test a chance to beat the pads off of Van Van's supposed madman and his evil or counterpart, Ashgly. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on, Packed nicely famous chicken pot pie. It's finally blending pie man with the delicious fried chicken. We are one. I am part of the game now. God. Oh yeah. After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. Pack nicely. What are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm big at visualizing success. I'm looking at my station picturing victory. This is like a ripoff of Danganronpa. Yeah, I mean, it's just like a ripoff of any, sh you know, like over dramatic visual novel ever. But it's like, I can't tell whether it's trying to be funny about it or not. I think yes. I think yes. <laughs> the pot pie has begun to bake and smell slowly filling space around you. Visualizing, huh? It's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. You'd usually be happy to share your food with anyone who's hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but that decision gets started to stick to when... <gasps> the oven timer goes off, mind you. I'll fess up. Okay. Okay. You got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know. My nose can smell a Popeye from 400 yards. That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You know it was a Popeye just from the smell. Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all-butter crust. <laughs> and my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? Ah, uh, ah, uh, no. I can smell that it was made with a heaping helping of TLC. Tits, legs, and cock. <laughs> but it'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. The moment of truth. Whoa. It's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking, and I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules! <laughs> Except to cook with everything I've got! You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide the mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing are just the dishes that'll put you over the edge to victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Eichkler are prepping wildly elaborate dishes per their over usual over-the-top selves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely preparing to go big, going small. Colonel Sanders seems to be harvesting his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe, <laughs> fried chicken. Trademark, of course. The intensity in the room starts out at a full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders butters, batters his chicken as it levitates through the air. What? Egg, egg wash. Miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend, buster, buster. What? Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. 
Oh, that's rock and ride. Ice guy scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. <laughs> Shadow personality spatula. Even Clank gets in on it. Five. He can speak. <laughs> Five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique. Wait, when did Clank learn to speak English? <gasps> it's, <laughs> it's the singularity. That's what foretold. We mustn't let that happen or the appliance uprising will take us all. self destruct What? Fanvad quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him out the back door of the arena. As you practically prepare your dish, you notice Ash Clay has her spell cut. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even as if it's almost certainly evil magic? Do, do it the hard way. Who needs magic when you've got passion? <laughs> oh, I'm going to do it the hard way. Who are you talking to? Colonel Satter sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. I believe in you, Pack Nicely. Yeah, you do. Miriam notices too. And I've always believed in you, Pack Nicely, since we were little kids, because I'm your best friend forever. You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station cheering for you. Uh, oh, Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who's cooking? Tiny food, choke cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. It's the secret ingredient. The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up in a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. It, it is... It is I, Steve, the Spark Monster. Oh, uh, Steve? Wait, what happened to Borco? You're not here to battle me, are you? We Spark Monsters are many. I think Borco had the day off. But you've got Steve, and I hate to battle, so I'd say you're doing pretty all right. Oh, we, you're in the middle of a cooking competition. I know this stuff. It's better than TV. You have crazy kids and your culinary cooking really impresses me. I'm to hang out. I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve, the support monster, notices you've got the grimoire stash beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Chris Cross some magic items and accidentally some of me, huh? Ah, you kind of guessed it, sort of. If you're here, would you mind uh, tossing some fresh noodles in a pot of salt and water? I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef, actually. No, but I was just a little spark pup back in the old country. You can feel Spork Monster winding up to tell a very long and involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems it was probably lonely there. Uh, actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on this competition. I understand. It's kind of that time in Monster School. I'd fallen asleep. Okay, yeah. And he took to toss a serious stare at Steve, and he had takes a hand. Uh, never mind. I'll tell you later. <laughs> Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win. I heard they're making a Scooby-Doo live action. That'll be great. Really? <gasps> That's awesome. Uh... Uh, uh, you summon extra power from deep down within yourself? I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows through your body. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for... Uh, uh, yes, back nicely. You are the chosen one. You, you will avenge me. The power you've been summoning immediately fades back out. You interrupted my inspiring monologue. I'm sorry. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. Uh, my taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off the ground. Energy courses through your body. You know that with this power you can do anything. Except turn back time, which would be super useful because while you were powering up your chicken pot pie overcooking the oven, it can't be served. But don't worry, pack dear, pack nicely. You may have suffered some setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides you have earned his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet. I'm rolling the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. I've managed to make us back and cheese, and time is almost up, so you're going to need it. Uh, but Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never really been my thing. I follow my heart. What a guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to unveil the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass their individual efforts. What are you suggesting? We can buy forces. We can form the perfect food union. Time is up, students. With time expired, it's the moment everyone's been waiting for. You must now present your dishes. And full of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Bob, Clank. From off screen, you hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only come from one student. Yeah, I'm flying. It sounds like it's coming from that broom closet over there. Uh, Spiegel, Mar Miriam, would you mind? Inside of the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now. Oh, let me guess. Did Vad Vad have something to do with this? When someone, um, when someone asks for a wedgie, I'm a homo to refuse. I got a wedgie with a salad. 
It uh, looks like Puff is eliminated from the challenge, seeing how he didn't cook anything. I can't feel my legs, maybe excuse. Sure. You kids and your pranks. I must say, it's not the first prank in UCSL history, but it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second. Pranks, pranks. Clank, where did that pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear a signature word beep or other on but there's none. Somehow he must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect your final projects. Isn't there... Five. Okay. Uh, yes, it has been a long semester. Oh, I feel it. <laughs> Whoa, three whole days long. But after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now grab your dish. I made tender udon noodles and savory soup. My bad, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny weeny doro to maki? I spies float in this itsy bitsy bowl. Yes, chef. Please, call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Yes, yeah, Sprinkles, and some green tea made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime, for did what else like a taste? Oh, come on, I'm not fond of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine, I'll enjoy it all myself. And the flash, the entire meal's been devoured. Not that it took much, it was less than a thimble's worth of soup. Okay. Hey, Flas, very little do I taste the dish with as much love put into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Thank you, Pack My Slave, for helping me to believe in myself. Van Van, you're up. Now describe your dish. Oh, I, um, I made unai over smooth egg custard in an axion nurtured shell topped with caviar. Did you just give one type of urchin with spines from a second different colored type of urchin? Yes, yeah, Sprinkles. A bit too much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is kind of my brand. Doesn't look cool. Sprinkles leans in to sniff the unai, but he can't get his nose his nose close on account of all the spikes. It begins to part it erratically, causing the custard to slush around. Fuff, fuff. <laughs> Please be gentle with my cuisine. Grr. Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Did you watch Spider-Man No Way Home yet? Did I watch Spider-Man No Way Home yet? It's not out until December. <laughs> Nyatch, my tongue. Professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't eat this. It kept pocking my tongue. Disqualified. Ah, oh, stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a ball made of needles could make it difficult to eat? Dejected Van Van does not go gently into the night. Disqualified for glamour. Don't discount simplicity. This isn't last you've heard of me. Before forcing to us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously lips, laps up a bowl of milk. Did you watch the Spider-Man No Way Home yet? Uh, no. Oh. Hell, I have class. I have to go. Oh, no worries. <laughs> That's okay. You can watch the VOD at any time. <laughs> and we're basically done anyway, I think. Though, I don't know if we're going to end up with him or not. Oh, damn. Next student, Ashley, it's time to step up. Now describe your dish. <sighs> yeah, fuck. <laughs> I keep losing the voices. Uh, oh, I made... It. Orange blossom, Turkish delight, and a light water rose water in a light wa rose water syrup topped with French meringue, that's connected by sugar glass. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Uh, don't eat the food. At a cook, uh, at a at a cooking school. Uh, got uh, got toast in your ears or something packed nicely. I told you, it's a display piece. Ashley, I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Ugh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Which is why I cooked it. I did an extremely good job cooking it, too. I didn't realize that we were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to the college eating. School for the hungry. Uh, I suppose that you could smell it if you absolutely insisted. But don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the sword cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Aishlai, and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have no high-head cuisine if it cooked you. Look at her fucking thighs, Jesus. And with that, Aishlai storms off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled to, being, <laughs> to trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. That feels like it's setting up for a sequel where she's even worse. This isn't the last you heard of me either. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cooks, step up together. Two chefs! What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something else. He examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. That looks gross, but I really like the idea in my head of 
chicken tendies and mac and cheese. That sounds nice. Uh oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll place. Just when I thought I'd seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this, this, this thing, and completely blow me away. In my 49 dog years of life, I've never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the exact class. You pass, you pass, and you pass, and you're gonna pass. Everyone gathers around and partakes of the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win. Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item is so impressive that even Van Van and I Schley are drawn back by its magne magnetic fragrance. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on. How could they be any better than this one? Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright co cute and cozy. DJ Jog is in the house! Oh, oh, oh! Oh, no. You know that Sprinkles is a master chef, but also a world-renowned turntablist who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Oh, my gosh. Damn. They're just dressed too sexy, both of them. God fucking damn. Van Van and Aishla tell everyone they've committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were villains. Great. Okay. Hey, Jin. Hey, Jin, Aishla. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. No gosh, you at graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. Uh. I was never uh, actually a, a ghost. It was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I'm using. And now that everyone is together. It's the Spork Monster. is totally mellowed out. <laughs> everyone, Spork Monster is no more. From here out, I don't prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name. Party Monster. Every student tries to finish what he had to say, but everyone is too wrapped up talking to a sport. Sorry, Party Monster. Dejected, student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found the love in her cooking and knows she's going to do great. Hell yeah. A red carpet rolls out across the room of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? It's Pop. He's arrived late to the dance, but apparently for good reason. Walking the carpet, you see perched atop his dirty chef's hat. Uh, 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 a crown! Welcome back, Pop. I know you've unable to complete the final exam and accept your diploma. So we had it mailed directly to our father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Uh, oh, now I get it. <laughs> and we have a new wing on the school. Not to mention the honor of educating the son of the Chancellor of Good Such and Such. The music of the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparking and electrical hissing. It's Clank who's arrived late to the dance. Now that I've graduated, I can reveal my truth. Wow, we're still doing the talking thing. I am Clank, and I am not of this earth. I am actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I actually feel like I knew that this whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. I have just begun to learn who I really am. In the time for me to devote my life to figuring out who you are, Clank. You're completely blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear that she has managed to surpass you in that regard. I understand. Kind of. Humans are weird. A portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, class. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> just like the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not just enough to give him a bucket of chicken. This time, it's a full meal. It, it, it's all of it. I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not... <laughs> in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. The... No. No. No, it's not the end. As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Oh, yeah. Pack nicely. What are you doing sitting all alone? Oh, you know, just waiting for the right person to ask me to dance. I wonder, might you tell me, what are the qualities that you would expect to find in such a lucky person? Off the top of my head, ah, oh, I don't know. A spicy musk, a tidy goatee, and a degree from the University of Cooking School Academy for learning to name a few. It truly is my lucky day. Would you care to dance with me? Yes. I would love to. As you glide across the dance floor, hand in hand with Colonel Sanders, the future stretches out in front of you. And once my 100th franchise is up and running, I'd be ready to take a day off, and I'll be glad to spend it together with you back nicely. Oh, sweet. We'll work together and play together. Colonel Sanders stops dead in his tracks. Work together. Well, uh, I think this is something I'll just need to do by myself. But who will help you run your restaurants? 
I don't believe I need help. Besides, based on your time at school here, do you really think running restaurants is the best path forward? Could it be? You found a love connection, but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a chef? Can you live with only half of them? Will you be able to endure sharing him with his other love, the life of an entrepreneur? I suppose I could enroll at pastry school. Oh my, dear, pack nicely. I'm sure that you'll find your place eventually. And along the way, you'll have me by your side. The end. I... I'm deeply unsatisfied. What? God damn it. We, I mean, I guess we get to fuck him. <laughs> oh god, I didn't see this before. That was the most elaborate part of the whole fucking game. What? Okay. Wow, that came out of nowhere. <laughs> really, really came out of nowhere, didn't it? Um. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go eat KF. I mean, eat dinner. Um, not. No, fuck. <laughs> God damn I, I don't know about you guys, I don't know about where you guys are, but I've never seen most of the things that were in this at a KFC. I've never seen mashed potatoes. I don't remember ever seeing coleslaw. Maybe in like a wrap. Is the KFC here way more basic than KFCs around the world? It doesn't matter. That couldn't matter less. <laughs> KFC. Buy it or don't. This wasn't sponsored. <laughs> But now I, I feel like I've become part of KFC. They've like absorbed me inside of the game. Imagine being sucked into that game like Jumanji. Oh god, I would just immediately commit suicide. Oh Jesus. Um, well, thank you guys for watching. Yep. <laughs> it was a time. Let me know literally anything else in the world. Especially if it's like a shortish game like this. Um, that you would like to see on Fridays. Because we do one of these every Friday. This was like 31. We've done 31 finishes it's already this year. Um, definitely though, from here on out, because in a week's time, it'll be the 31st. So I think from here on out, we'll be on a Halloween slate. I think the next like five finish or so are all going to be spooky. So if you've got a particular horror game you would like to see me play as one of these, let me know in chat or in the comments. I will probably be on stream tomorrow morning for Moyage Mythology. Don't know if I'll be on on Sunday yet. There's definitely at least one day next week I'm going to have to take off because I am now in the process of moving. Um... But thank you guys so much for watching. I'm starving. I'm actually so fucking hungry. I need to go eat. And I'll see you guys.